greetings, sports fans, ASMR Sports. Hey, we had a, a request I saw recently in a comment uh, for some old school wax packs, and I thought, hey, you know, there's a, there's a always fun idea that I have not done in a while. So we're going to kind of slow roll some 1988 Tops and Donruss baseball cards. Uh, there's a handful of Hall of Famers that you can get in these bad boys. Um, but uh, really these are nice because these nice wax wrappers. Actually I have the uh, sound on this mic right here turned down because um, when I do Modern stuff that has, you know, plastic, um, sort of foily wrappers, uh, can be a little too loud. With these old school wrappers, it's, um, in the background, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. These are, uh, by the way, cello packs, MSRP, 69 cents, back in 1988. Hard to say what the you know, value of these things is these days on the open market. Shipping, you know, is going to cost more than the cards themselves, so it's hard to, hard to know exactly. All right, 88 Donruss. This one is, uh, this, these packs are from a, a group that I bought. She was in the last couple of years at some point. I just bought a bunch of um, miscellaneous packs from a guy that I know in the town where I live. And recently I've actually been um, investigating possibility of making my own wax packs. There's a company called um, Repacked Wax, which basically makes, you know, wax packs of cards that are just, you know, repacks. So they, you know, get a bunch of older 80s and like 90s cards and they just, you know, randomize them and put them in wax paper wrapped packs just like they used to make back in the day. And uh, there's actually a, a few companies that do that now, and I've always thought um, that seems like a fun idea. Um, and I found a company that, you know, will will uh, print up the the wax wrappers you can use, and you just have to hand wrap them. <laughs> what 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 got me thinking about this is I was reading the um, the book by Mike Kramer, Kramer's Choice. Is his book. And um, I've mentioned this a few times because I started, I, I picked up that book because uh, one of my subscribers mentioned it in a, um, in a, uh, uh, a chat on a live stream and I thought, I thought it sounded pretty interesting so I, I ordered it up and it's pretty cool and anyways, um, you know, he basically was a card collector in like the, you know, late 70s and early 80s and, um, um, you know, would print, would, would basically found a printer that could make cards and he would do cards for like minor league teams or like promotional things for um, different, uh, different uh, kinds of like teams or events or organizations. And eventually he got into, you know, um, making his own card sets. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think if I have like a box. I'm sure I must somewhere. Gosh, I'm not sure where it is, but anyways, yeah. So he made um, like a sort of legends, you know, like a retired Hall of Famer type card product, and uh, was wrapped in wax wrappers. And he tells this, you know, little story about. 
how he, um, you know, basically figured out what machines that, you know, Tops and Don Russ and Flair were using to wax, wrap wax packs around cards, and he, you know, ended up getting some of those machines in there, these big, huge, clunky things, you know, and they have a conveyor belt, um, and, uh, yeah, they were originally used to wrap, like, candy back in the 70s, 60s, and 70s, but anyways, <laughs> turns out he ends up, like, you know, ba basically, like, along with everybody else, you know, like, th like, throwing all those machines away, because, um, you know, better, faster, cheaper options became available, and, um, kind of sad. I was, I, kept, I, I was thinking, like, gee, I wonder if I could find one of those old machines. You know, they, 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 uh, they're huge and heavy. You'd have to, like, ship it by freight, and, um, I'm sure you can't find parts for it, and I'm sure they break down, and they're probably, like, you know, impossible to figure out <laughs> how to use, uh, but, you know, I mean, this guy threw away all of the ones that he bought over the years for, you know, he bought them for like a couple thousand dollars. And, uh, ended up just, just throwing them out, out because, you know, didn't have space for them. So, like, theoretically, I could have gotten one for, for free, plus shipping, of course. But, you know, could it, could it have been operated? I don't know. But anyways, this made me really sort of nostalgic and think it would be cool to have you know, some wax wrappers, if you, could, if you could print them up, then, and actually, I think, he, yeah, he also said this, like, before he found one of those machines, he actually just had people, um, you know, hand-folding, um, wax wrappers, you know, to make his, his products, and that became pretty unwieldy after a while, but, you know, for, for a small-time operation, you could, you could do it. Um, anyways, I would probably get pretty sick of wrapping wax uh, packs if I if I decided to do this little experiment. Um, but I still think it would be fun. So anyways, that's uh, something I've been thinking about. All right, here we go, Mark McLemore. It's like a second or, yeah, second or third year card. Oh, this guy, I feel like he, he was, uh, God, was he a rated rookie in like the 86 Don Russ set? Like maybe it was, but it could be hallucinating. Um, Yvonne Calderon. He was a decent power hitter there for a little stretch in the 80s. 28 home runs in 1987. From Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Scott Fletcher. He was like a defensive specialist. Um, infielder, not a home run hitter. Decent averages. Trade from the White Sox to the Rangers. And there's our first rated rookie. Of course, you're always looking for the rated rookies when you get Donruss products from the 80s. That beautiful blue rated rookie. Uh, logo that they still use on Donruss products made by Panini uh, to this day, so uh, that's really stood the test of time. Now I'm sure it has a little uh, R circle for registered trademark on it, but uh, back then they didn't appear to care enough to do that. Um, I mean, it probably wasn't a registered trademark back then, but I think uh, it really sort of, um, you know, came into its own over time as collectors just really gravitated towards those rated rookies. And uh, that same logo is used today. Uh, right, Nelson Lariano never really amounted to a whole lot. Um, Casey Kendall was, uh, I think, a pretty good, pretty good prospect back in the day, but you know, didn't do a, a whole lot in the bigs. Carter Lansford, of course, played for multiple uh, World Series Oakland A's teams. I think he was kind of a of specialists with a little bit of pop in the bed. Good for uh, double digit home runs each of his first uh, five seasons. Of course, he was teammates with, uh, you know, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, um, Terry Steinbach, all the greats of those late 80s Bash Brother Oakland A's teams. Danny Tartable had a pretty solid career was also a very highly tatter rookie. His rookies, I believe, were in 85 Don Russ, so he was skin cards before he had played, you know, more than a handful of games. Um, in fact, was Tartable, I feel like, I feel like Tartable was
was a guy, was, there's a couple examples in Donruss baseball card history where uh, somebody got two rated rookies. And I, I feel like he, he's one of those guys. He got an 85 Donruss rated rookie and then had an 86 Donruss rated rookie, which you'd think would be sort of not possible, but did happen in a couple of cases. I feel like he was one of them. I might, I might be wrong, but I think he was one of them. All right, Steve Sachs. Kind of a uh, pretty solid middle infielder that uh, ended up getting traded to the Yankees. Pretty much like right after this year, I think. Um, had a you know decent run there, but the Yankees were effing terrible. Late 80s and uh, you know very early 90s before they got their act together. Basically, after Don Manley retired in 95, they started to win like you know nonstop World Series from 96 onward. Don Manley says, "F you guys, thanks for nothing." But <laughs> it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. I really looked at this guy's stats. Um, you know, pretty decent average. Obviously not a home run hitter, but probably got some walks too. I don't think they, yeah, they don't, oh, they do list them here, yeah. All right, speaking of the Yankees, Ron Guidry, Louisiana Lightning. would say pretty easily the best starting pitcher to play for the Yankees in the 80s, which, truth be told, isn't saying much. Got Dave Forgetti to contend with. But, uh, yeah, Gidry, if you don't know Gidry, and it's not on here because they only list, like, the last, you know, basically five years max of stats on Don Russ cards. But back in, like, uh, God, it was, like, the late 70s. It was, like, 78 or 9. He had, like, a ridiculous uh, season. He was, like, I don't know, like, 28 and 1 or some crap like that. It was just insane. Um, and even on here, he's got some pretty good seasons 22 and 6 with the um you know uh league lead in victories so you know he had a pretty dang nice career it's too bad the yankees couldn't uh put a little more around him in the in the 80s uh in the 70s different story slightly but 80s were pretty depressing for uh, the yankees uh, at least from the mid 80s onward. All right, there's Ellis Brooks. Back in the day, this would have been a, probably a buck fifty, two dollar card, rookie card. He was a really um, sought after rookie back in '88. One of the probably top five, I'd say. He had 20 home runs with the Red Sox in 1987, so that was undoubtedly the reason for that. Um, didn't end up having like a you know Hall of Fame career, but he was around for a while. I think he played with a few different teams. After the Sox, the Sox were pretty terrible back in the 80s as well. It's kind of the Blue Jays who were winning the AL East. You know, they had uh, George Bell and uh, Jesse Barfield and a bunch of great pitchers. And, uh, yeah, I think they were quite the team. All right, well, our first Hall of Famer, I think, Cal Ripken. Um, I was just seeing Cal Ripken in the news because... Um, his dad, who was a, a manager for the Orioles, I think he played for the Orioles a little bit, but was more known for um, being a manager of the Orioles. And um, his his uniform number, I think, was like seven or something. And um, Jackson uh, Holiday, who just got called up to the major leagues, that's that's the son of one of the sons of uh, Matt Holiday, who had a pretty long and illustrious. MLB career, but Jackson Holiday was the number one um, prospect in the minor leagues before he got called up just recently, and he uh, picked uh, the same number that uh, Cal Ripken Sr. wore when he was managing, and um, Cal Ripken, I think, you know, tweeted something about how, you know, he certainly uh, is honored to have uh, such an outstanding young player wear his dad's number, which I thought was a very classy Classy move, boy, look at this. Um, in 1983, 
he led the league in games. That's not that surprising because he had a, he had basically the max number of games every <laughs> every uh, season he played since he never missed a game. Um, Cal Ripken Jr. has the major league record for most consecutive number of games played. For those who don't know, beating Lou Gehrig back in 1990 something. Anyways, but he led in games. Not surprising at bat. I suppose that kind of comes along with it. But he didn't lead in at bats in any other season. Um, hits definitely you know harder to do. Runs probably maybe even harder to do. And doubles. So quite a year <laughs> in 1983. Cal Ripken Jr. B.J. Saroff was a pretty pretty decent rookie back in '87. And uh, yeah, he was like a a future star in the 87 top set, and I think a rated rookie in the 87 Donra set, and Benito Santiago, another one of those pretty solid rookies from 1987. People were kind of excited about back in the day. Well, holy cripes, that took 16 minutes to get through one Farkin pack, so <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll do one tops and see where we uh, land. This is like uh, 28 cards, and the wax packs are 15, so... I don't know, we might have enough for a video after this one, and so that's cool. Um, I can do the other ones later. You guys let me know what you think of this sort of style of video. Jeff Calhoun, 
noticing is that um, Fisk looks pretty nicely centered. I mean, a little bit off top to bottom, but left to right looks solid enough. Pretty rare for 88 tops to be centered. Bob Brownlee's not looking too bad either. Of course, here's, he's a catcher, but he was a long time, uh, long time manager. There's one that has uh, Mark McGuire that has a little error that you can get that's not really valuable, but Al Nipper and the checklist starting with number one, so that's pretty cool. I don't know why, but <laughs> it is. Dave LaPointe with a really horribly airbrushed um, uniform on there back when they actually used like physical airbrushes, which were, you know, little devices that sprayed paint out of a nozzle. Now they do it all digitally, of course, but uh, back then they really had, you know, airbrushes to paint over stuff and make photos into new creations. Randy Bush. Dwayne Ward, I feel like this guy was pretty solid for like a little bit of the Blue Jays' uh, impressive 80s performance. Greg Catteray and Don Baylor, longtime player Don Baylor, started in 1970. Had a lot of home runs, 331. He ended up with the Twins. He might have had like one been on one other team. All right. Um, I'm going to open one more pack and uh, probably go through it a little more quickly, looking for the highlights. Smith, Hall of Famer, All-Star card, pretty sweet. Willie Wilson, had a really nice long career. Look at that 1980 stat line. Led in uh, runs, hits, and uh, triples. Tim Wallach, he's a pretty big star for a number of years. Sparky Anderson, longtime manager for a number of teams. 
Mike Gallego was another one of those uh, Bash Brother era A's stalwarts. Pat Clements. I was just thinking, yeah, Al Leiter has a card in this set. And um, it's a it's, there's an error variation where it, I think it shows, uh, God, who does it show? Is it his brother, Mark Leiter, who it shows? That might be it. But um, I was just thinking, um, I was reading today that Al Leiter's uh, son, Jack Leiter, um, just got called up to play in the big, so he'll be pitching, I think, this week. kind of fun. The Al Leiter card is also a Future Stars card, and we have not pulled a Future Stars card yet. So it would be awesome to see one of those. Mel Hall had a very uh, sorted uh, um, life after baseball. He picked up on like, um, I don't know, some kind of like child sexual abuse charges, I think, um, back in the, I want to say like the 90s, maybe. Um, so, yeah, that guy's either in jail or has served some time. Oh, well, there you go. There's one of the best cards you can get out of here um, back then. <laughs> now, not so great, but pretty sweet. Mark McGuire with the Topps All-Star Rookie Cup logo. Tough to beat that. Tough to beat that for an iconic 1988 card. That 49 home runs set the rookie record uh, for home runs in 87 and set the hobby ablaze. But uh, he would go even more bonkers over his stuff when he was, um, you know, shooting for the single season home run record. And look at that. Um, this is the card I was just talking about earlier the record breaker card with Mark McGuire. So you see this little. Um, like thing on his heel so they, there's versions of this card without this little white spot which really shouldn't I think even be there it's like his foot is sort of bent in a way that that part doesn't really belong there but since they decided to put it in and some got printed before they made that change and I think it's um, the ones without this that are slightly more rare and are considered the error but uh I may be mistaken. Anyways, cool to see that. If we got the L lighter, I'd be I'd be super happy. But okay, so we probably won't get the L lighter. Yeah, we're not gonna get L but we did get the Pedro Guerrero, which is what I wanted to see. So we could check his stat line out. I mean look at this guy, thirty two home runs, thirty two home runs, thirty three home runs, twenty seven home runs, and this guy's hitting over three hundred at this point. So um, only at hundred and sixty six home runs total. And I don't remember him playing like a super long time so that's probably sort of the reason why he's not in the conversation usually for uh, Hall of Fame but man he had some really nice really nice seasons kind of like you know like a Dale Murphy type player you know just some amazing single seasons might have been in the MVP conversation you know for some of those seasons where he had 30 plus um, but ultimately, maybe career just too short to have the, you know, career numbers add up to Hall of Fame caliber stuff. So, there you go, folks. There's three packs of uh, cards from 1988. The uh, worst year of baseball cards in the 80s, in my humble opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time. You have a great one. And we will see you all later. Bye now.